Hello and welcome to a Minecraft video. I'm Scudobuyo playing Vanilla Minecraft 1.8.4 PC Edition and this is the second in a series of videos in which I conquer an ocean monument. Uh, in this video I will be killing the first of the three Elder Guardians. Uh, in particular I'll be killing the Elder Guardian in a lower wing of the monument, uh, the wing that's dominated by a large room with uh, kind of a plus shaped pillar in the middle. If you are looking for another part of the strategy in action, a link to the other videos in this series can be found in the description. The uh, contents of this chest here uh, show all of the project materials that I'll have with me as I kill all three Elder Guardians. Uh, as you can see, I've already uh, gathered the, um, uh, everything from my, stack of, uh, from my stock of project materials, uh, with the exception of the milk here. Uh, so the first thing I, I need to do then is to park this lava and go milk a cow. Uh, I've also grabbed a couple of boats, uh, one I'm going to need to get out to the monument and another to get back, um, and uh, I've gotten some food as well. Um, that should suit me th throughout most of the project, I think. Uh, I'm going to also dump some tools here that I don't need. Uh, the only thing that I'm actually going to need uh, is a pickaxe. And let me get rid of this lava here. I'll get that later. And it's time to go milk a cow. I noticed some cows had spawned on this peninsula over here, so I don't have to go very far. Uh, but um, I'll only have to get milk at most twice. Uh, this is the first time. If I'm unlucky, I'll have to come back here again. Um, uh, so it, the cows really don't need to be very close by uh, because I'm only going to have to come out here once or twice. There's three buckets. Okay, and time to head out to the monument. There's the front of the monument. Uh, you can see because of the lighted path uh, that um, indicates the entrance down below. I'm actually going to go around the back here. Okay, this should be uh, a safe enough distance, I think. Uh, the next thing I'm going to need to do is establish a safe position on the monument. Uh, and there are actually several ways in which to do this. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to ride my boat directly over the center of the monument to this, uh, to this ring up here. Uh, and I am going to... Uh, drop a block of sand right on this front left corner. So there's the front of the monument with the lighted path uh, and I'm gonna drop just one block of sand right there. I'm gonna hop up onto the sand and I am going to place sugar canes uh, onto the sand and that will hide me from the guardian. So at this point I'll be safe. Uh, the, uh, I should be able to do this before the guardians can uh, get off too many shots at me. I might take a hit or two, um, uh, but later on I'll demonstrate a, another another way to get over here that's uh, more or less attack-free. Uh, but it does require a lily pad and another stack of cobblestone slabs. Uh, okay, before I start with the boat, um, I, uh, I need to note the orientation of the monument, uh, what compass direction it faces. Uh, and that's because uh, a player gets dumped one block to the east when exiting a boat over open water. Uh, so when I exit uh, the boat, I want to land directly onto this uh, to this ring over the middle of the monument here. Uh, and I want to land facing the front left corner so I can just uh, drop that block of sand there. Uh, that means I can approach the monument from the back and uh, ride the boat over the left side of the ring. Or I can approach from the right and ride the boat over the front side of the ring. Uh, but in order to land directly on the ring itself, uh, I need to know the orientation of the monument uh, given the boat mechanics. Uh, this monument faces east, uh, so I'm going to approach from the back. My boat is over there somewhere. 
uh, and uh, I'll ride the boat in at full speed and I'll exit when I'm roughly over this back left corner uh, which should dump me uh, somewhere here over the uh, side of, uh, on the left side of the ring uh, and uh, I'll just let the boat drift off somewhere over there. There's my boat. Okay, um, I'm going to wait off the uh, side of the monument a little bit uh, in order to give the um, uh, in order to give the guardian spawning time to stabilize. Uh, when guardians aren't actively swimming, uh, they slowly sink. Uh, and so most of the guardians are going to, uh, most of the ones that spawn outside of the monument uh, are going to settle to rest on top of the monument. Uh, and because guardians won't target a player more than five blocks above their position, I'll only be targeted by guardians near the surface of the water. Uh, while I'm waiting, um, I've already prepared my hot bar here uh, with two blocks of sand and the sugar canes. Uh, and then holding the sand, uh, I'm going to head over the, over the ring of the monument. Here goes. Okay, over the corner. And I drop my sand. And I spam two sugar canes. And now I'm pretty much safe. Um, <coughs> uh, so uh, now that I'm uh, on the ring, uh, I'm hiding in the sugar canes, I'm going to break the sugar canes. Uh, add one more block of sand and then replace the sugar canes. Alright, got mining fatigue there. Okay, um, this is as high as I can go with the ocean being at the side of the pillar. Uh, but I need to pillar at least five blocks higher in order to reach an altitude at which the guardians won't initiate an attack. Uh, so I'm going to prepare my hot bar with five more blocks of sand. There we go. Uh, and uh, I'll also need a bucket of water. Okay, and I've got the sugar canes there. Uh, and holding the sand, I'm going to break the sugar canes and use uh, and just pillar up those five blocks of sand until uh, there's no more sand left in my hot bar. Okay. Uh, if a guardian had initiated an attack while I was pillaring, I would have used the water to place a water source block directly on the sand and then I would have uh, spammed sugar canes there uh, and that would have broken off the guardian attack. Didn't need to do that in this case though. Uh, okay, at an altitude of 68 or higher, I'm now safe from the guardians. Uh, you can see my Y coordinate there. Uh, I'm more than five blocks above the uh, highest position that the guardians can reach, uh, so none of them will initiate an attack. Uh, I could reach this point more safely by platforming here from a distance. Uh, the problem with doing so is that I need a point from which to build the base of a path. Uh, and the water might be too deep uh, to uh, pillar from the ocean floor. And in this case, uh, the nearest shore is relatively close, uh, but it could be much further away, uh, maybe hundreds of blocks. Um, instead, though, I can start a pillar in the middle of the water by using a lily pad. Let me uh, get a lily pad here. And I'm also going to uh, use some cobblestone and some slabs. All right. So lily pads can be placed directly on the water. Uh, and they don't actually require any solid blocks to be adjacent. So I can just drop a lily pad straight on the water there. Uh, and, uh, and then I can place other blocks against the lily pad. Now the hitbox of the lily pad is too small to place blocks against the side, uh, but I can place uh, blocks on top uh, or, uh, or on the bottom. So I just dropped a cobblestone there. Uh, the lily pad popped out uh, because it didn't have a water block underneath it anymore. It uh, fell down into the ocean there. That's fine. Um, but now I've got the base of a path, uh, just kind of in the middle of the water here. And I'm going to pillar up two, three, four, five blocks. And now I am at the safe altitude of 68. Uh, I'm going to cap this little pillar with a cobblestone slab. 
And then I'm going to use slabs to reach, uh, uh, to just kind of uh, platform over the front of the monument uh, to where I would want to make that sand pillar. All right, let's do this a little bit more quickly. A little bit further. Of course, this wouldn't be there. All right, now I want to uh, actually platform to that front left corner. It looks like I'm off by a block, so I'm going to just move over a little bit here. Finish my path. And I want to have my path go so that it is adjacent to the ring. It looks like I'm one block short. There we go. Um, now the next block would be over the ring. Uh, I'm going to put uh, one more slab to the side uh, away from the ring. And then I can stand over here. And uh, place one, two, three, four, five, six, seven blocks of sand. Um, and that is how I would get over here um, by platforming uh, from the middle of the ocean uh, rather than using a boat. Uh, it's um, uh, it's definitely uh, uh, safer uh, because I don't risk uh, any guardian attacks at all. Um, but it's just a little bit more complicated and, and uh, a little bit slower, so I prefer to use a boat. All right, let's get rid of this here. All right, uh, returning to the sand pillar at an altitude of 68. I'm going to cap the sand pillar with a cobblestone slab, and then I'm going to uh, build a, um, a mimic of the uh, monument ring up here with bottom half cobblestone slabs. There we go, I've got my replica up here. Uh, now I'm going to build an extension of six blocks to the front, off the front left corner. Uh, that's the corner with this uh, sand pillar here. Okay, there's the front of the monument down there below. Uh, you can see the lighted path. Uh, and now I'm going to build an arm off of the end of this forward extension uh, to the left by 15 blocks. Okay, um, now I'm going to add two more slabs to the front separated by a one block gap uh, and that forms kind of C shape at the end of the arm here. I'm going to cap the end block with two more slabs uh, to form a kind of backstop. And now I'll dump three more blocks of sand, one, two, three, into the gap of the C shape there. Uh, and I stand on the forward block of the arm and prepare my hot bar with some sugar canes. Okay, um, I'm first going to do this in creative mode uh, in order to uh, be able to actually show what's happening here uh, because it's really dark in the water. And uh, afterwards I'll come back up and do it in survival so, so that uh, we can see how it looks while it's dark. Uh, okay, so I'm going to be standing on this forward block facing away from the backstop and I'll step backwards and as soon as I bump up against the backstop, I'll release the directional controls, and this will ensure a purely vertical drop over the correct spot. Uh, in order to make the fall even more accurate, I could add a, uh, an open trap door onto the backstop, and that would make sure that I fall directly into the middle of the sand, uh, but I've never really needed it, so I didn't include it in the project materials. Okay, as I fall through the air, uh, and then uh, sink through the water, I'll be spam placing the sugar canes. Um, and they'll be placed onto the sand that I dropped earlier as soon as the sand is within reach. Uh, it'll be too dark for me to see though, uh, and that's why I need the drop guide to make sure that I'm placing the sugar canes onto the sand. Uh, after I reach the sand, I'll center myself over the block inside the sugar canes. Um, uh, of course, it'll be really dark. It gets a little bit lighter because of the air pocket that's created by the sugar canes. 
um, but it's still very, very dark. Uh, and even, but, but even with the brightness uh, set to moody, so it's basically as dark as it can be, uh, I'll be able to see well enough to center myself inside the sugar canes uh, if I look straight up. Uh, now, it takes about three seconds from the time I step off this uh, forward block uh, to the time that I place the sugar canes. Uh, so I will be exposed uh, for three seconds. Uh, however, it takes a guardian attack about four seconds to charge, and that's regardless of the difficulty level. Uh, so even if a guardian targets me immediately after I step off the platform, I'll reach the sugar canes to break off the attack before it completes. Okay, um, now facing the, uh, uh, the middle of the monument, the center of the monument, I can uh, see that because of the lighted, uh, the sea lantern lighted path there. Uh, so facing this direction, I'm going to take a uh, jack-o-lantern and I want to uh, create some work light. So uh, roughly centered in the sand, if I have my cursor over the edge of the sand there and I sidle on over to the, to the right, that will put me in the correct position for placing the jack-o-lantern. I just want it right on that block of the monument there. Uh, and once I have some light, I'm going to take a block of cobblestone and drop it on top of the, that nub of prismarine bricks that's opposite the jack-o-lantern. Uh, and then I'm going to prepare uh, a door, and uh, at least one door, and uh, some cobblestone in my hotbar. And I'm going to back uh, off of the sand and sink down in between the cobblestone and the jack-o-lantern uh, as I place the door. Okay. Uh, that will sandwich me in between the door and the sand, uh, and then I'll quickly place another cobblestone on that top block of sand there, uh, and that will create a nice little safe area on the exterior of the monument. Uh, okay, um, uh, I'm going to go ahead and tear this down and uh, return to the top so I can do it in survival mode. Okay, I'm back on the platform, um, standing on this forward block of the arm. Uh, I face away from the backstop, uh, look straight down, hold the sugar canes, uh, and I'm going to step back to fall into the water. And I spam place the sugar canes as I fall. They got placed, and now I'm centered inside the sugar canes on top of the block of this uh, on top of the block of sand. Let me get a jack o' lantern. Okay, now I have some work light. Get back in the sugar canes here. Grab the cobblestone, place one cobblestone there, and now I ready my doors. And there we go. I uh, have my nice safe area. You saw a guardian target me there, but um, it, because it takes a while for the guardian attacks to charge, uh, I was pretty easily able to get into the safe area here. Uh, now, what I'm going to do here um, uh, is uh, I'm going to punch a hole in the floor. Uh, and that's because I'm right above the place where the maze of, uh, of rooms of the monument and the wing where the Elder Guardian is, I'm, I'm right above where they connect. Let's go down there and, and take a peek. Okay, I think I better get some light here. All right. Uh, so there's the Elder Guardian. And uh, in this case, the wing here is, is dominated by a large room with a, a central plus-shaped pillar. Um, but the strategy here uh, is the same for either wing configuration because the relevant blocks are the same. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to punch a hole in the floor, as I mentioned, uh, and um, that's this block right up here. Uh, and I will fall, uh, or fall and sink, rather, right down in this block, and I'm going to place four doors here to form something that kind of resembles an airlock. So I'll place one door on the block that I land, move to the left, place a door, 
uh, move back, uh, just phase through the door there, uh, place another door, uh, move to the right, place another door, uh, and now I'm protected between, uh, between these four doors here. Uh, and I've got a safe position from which I can complete my attack on the Elder Guardian. Uh, it, it is possible, but it's really unlikely for the side blocks here and here and the top blocks of this little airlock to be missing, uh, in which case I'd want to place two more doors and a couple of cobblestone. Um, but uh, they're probably there, and even if they're, they're not, it's, it doesn't really pre present much of a challenge to add them. Uh, okay, I'm going to head back up onto the exterior of the monument and um, uh, and uh, try this in survival. And uh, back on the exterior. Okay, uh, when I break the block of the floor, uh, this door will pop out because this door is actually placed on top of this block. Uh, so first I'm going to open the door and I'm going to place another door behind it. <clears throat> All right, um, now I ready my hot bar with milk, uh, the pickaxe, and the doors. Uh, I face the sand, uh, I look straight down and press my back up against this back door here. Uh, and now I wait for the Elder Guardians to afflict me with mining fatigue. Uh, you saw that I was, I was just inflicted a moment ago there. Uh, each Elder Guardian checks once per minute for nearby players. Uh, and if a player has less than one minute of mining fatigue remaining, the Elder Guardian afflicts that player again. Uh, so if I wait to be afflicted with mining fatigue, I'll have one minute before that Elder Guardian performs its check again. Uh, so I'll immediately drink the milk and break the prismarine floor. Now if I'm unlucky, one of the other two Elder Guardians will perform its check after I drink the milk, but before I break the block. Uh, in which case, uh, I'll need to drink a second milk. Uh, if I'm really unlucky, the third Elder Guardian will perform its check after I drink the second milk, uh, in which case I'll need to drink a third milk. Uh, but all of that would happen in the span of just a few seconds, and I'd have plenty of time to break the block uh, before the first Elder Guardian performed its check again. All right, um, so now I'm just going to uh, stay here and wait for mining fatigue to be inflicted again. Uh, if I don't, if I, if I get impatient and I try to uh, go ahead and drink milk uh, without waiting for mining fatigue to be inflicted first, it's possible that uh, each time I drink a milk, an Elder Guardian could inflict with mining fatigue. Uh, and in the end, I'd use up all three of my milks and I would be stuck down here. Uh, so... I am just going to wait. Um, I, I'll uh, I'll see you in a moment when I uh, uh, when the Elder Guardian is about to inflict me with mining fatigue. Okay, uh, there was mining fatigue again, uh, so I'm going to drink the milk, break the block, and then place my doors for the airlock, uh, and I'm safe. Uh, now, it's dark here, but the area around the pillar is lit by sea lanterns. Uh, so I might actually be able to see the Elder Guardian. He's right down there. It's a little bit hard to see, but uh, you can see him uh, right over there. Um, if I don't see him, though, I need to check the room that's immediately behind me. Uh, and uh, that's because it's possible for an Elder Guardian to move horizontally through a 2 by 2 opening. Uh, that's this airlock here. Uh, so it could enter this back room. Uh, it won't go far into the monument, though, for two reasons. Uh, first, Elder Guardians are just big. Uh, it's difficult for them to move around. Uh, they can barely fit through 2x2 two two horizontal openings, and they can't seem to fit through 2x2 two two vertical openings. Uh, second, Elder Guardians exhibit a kind of homing behavior. Uh, you could tear down the entire monument, and they just hover around their spawn points. Uh, still, the, the Elder Guardian sometimes finds its way in here, uh, and um, if I see it in here, I'll need to trap it by sealing each remaining wall exit with an airlock. Uh, and then I might also want to uh, seal the floor exit there that you, that you can see, uh, I'd seal that with cobblestone, uh, so that the sponge dropped by the Elder Guardian doesn't fall through when I kill it. Uh, okay. Um, if the Elder Guardian is not in that back room, and I still can't see it in the big room here, 
basically that means that it's going to be in a lower passageway um, that kind of surrounds this room on the outside uh, uh, um, and uh, in which case I'll have to go chasing after it but here the elder guardian is still in this room thankfully uh, so I'm uh, and it can't come into the back room because it's blocked by my airlock here uh, but I'm gonna need to go to the front there and block the uh, exit to the lower passageway so I'm going to leave the protection of the airlock here and I'm going to swim to the back corner of one side and then I'm just going to place doors all the way down uh, all the way down the side here uh, and in order to prevent the uh, elder guardian from getting through uh, I can grab a jack lantern I can just drop it right in this middle block there I actually placed two I only needed to place one in the middle block uh, but two is fine and now the elder guardian is trapped in there uh, so um, I could at this point kill the Elder Guardian, but he, if he was, uh, <laughs> he's really close here, uh, if he was out in the lower passageway I'd have to go chasing after him, uh, and I just want to show you how that would work. Um, first I'm going to get this guy to move here. Uh, the Guardians um, tend to stick to one position. Um, uh, but you can convince them to move by letting them briefly target you. Uh, so if I scoot down here, I let the elder the elder guardian target me there, and that should convince him to move. There we go. Okay, so now he's out of my way. All right, so I'm going to go uh, to that. Um, uh, to the airlock over or to the uh, exit to the lower passageway there and I'm going to add an airlock just gonna drop some doors one two three four five six uh, and for some additional safety I'm gonna place some cobblestone overhead uh, now if the elder guardian was in the lower passageway there I'd want to uh, head over it's you can't really see it uh, because it's really dark in the water uh, but I'd want to head over, there's a wall on the other side here, and I would go over to that wall and I'd place doors all along uh, the side from one end to the other. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. Up against the wall, I place doors all the way down to one side. Uh, any uh, attacks by regular guardians here could be thwarted just by, um, uh, just by opening doors. Okay, um, in order to provide a little bit of light, uh, I'm going to drop a jack-o'-lantern here, and if there are any guardians that are sort of down in this lower uh, lower bit here filled with water, uh, you can kind of usher them out by periodically placing jack-o'-lanterns. So there's none there, place a jack-o'-lantern, none there, place a jack-o'-lantern, and, and that's fine. Okay, so I'm safe inside here. Um, the jack-o'-lanterns will also light the area inside the doors, uh, which uh, which makes it a little bit easier for me to see down the hallway, so I'd be able to tell uh, which side the elder guardian was on. I could see it all pretty much all the way down the inner hallway here, uh, and uh, on the outside. Um, this hallway goes all the way down uh, to the end of the monument. Uh, like I said, the guardian has kind of homing behavior though, so he's probably not going to go all that uh, all that far. Uh, but once I identify which side of the which side of the lower passageway here he, he's on, I would just uh, cordon off the area uh, with walls of uh, jack lanterns, cobblestone, and doors uh, in order to isolate him and kill him. And in this case, he's in the um, uh, he is in the large room though, so I'm going to head back there. Okay, for some additional safety, I'm going to drop cobblestone uh, all the way the length of this, uh, uh, my little door passageway here. Uh, and now I'm good to go. Now I can just go ahead and kill the Elder Guardian at my, uh, at my leisure. Uh, a l word of warning about TNT, though. Uh, let me move some of this around here. TNT is a really great underwater weapon, but you have to make sure that it actually detonates underwater. So as I'm placing doors, uh, if I place a, uh, uh, oh, I'm trying to do a demo here. Uh, if I place a door uh, on, the, uh, on the ground, let's say right here, uh, it creates this nice little air pocket that I've been using to move around. Uh, do not place a, a block of TNT 
uh, on the side of the door uh, where there's the open air pocket. Um, and that's because an unlucky uh, combination of uh, water mechanics and TNT mechanics can cause ignited TNT to slide into this open uh, into this air pocket. Uh, so that the center of the explosion would actually occur in the air rather than in the water. Uh, and that would destroy the door and some of the floor underneath and, and maybe a few other blocks. Um, so just a, uh, just a note there. Um, anywhere else is fine. So here on the side, because the TNT is sort of bumping up against the side of the door, it can't move into the space. Uh, also on the other side is fine, uh, corners are fine, uh, everywhere else is fine except right here. Um, if you do need to place the TNT right there, uh, make sure to open the door so that the edge of the door is pushing against the TNT so the TNT, the ignited TNT can't slide into the ear pocket. Okay. Back to the Elder Guardian here. Okay, he's way over on the other side of the room. I'd prefer he be closer um, so that I don't really have to go running after the sponge that he's going to drop. Um, I'm going to try to get him a little bit closer. He swims around a little bit on his own, but like I said, if I let him target me, that will kind of resets his pathing behavior and uh, that'll prompt him to move, so he might move closer. Uh, at this point, I'm probably going to just drop a TNT block close to him here and light it, move off to a safer distance. Okay, uh, a single shot is not going to kill him. Uh, it usually takes, uh, uh, at, well, it takes at least two. Um, uh, rarely more than four, though. So um, two to four is, is the general rule. All right, so let him target me. That'll prompt him to move. He moved a little bit closer. Okay, so he actually died there. I can see his sponge kind of floating on the ground there. Uh, there is another uh, regular guardian out there, but um, that's not going to pose too much of a problem. If he gets in a shot on me, that's fine. Okay. Uh, and, uh, and that's basically it. I got my first sponge. Uh, and uh, now I'm going to return to the, uh, to the first airlock up here. Uh, and um, uh, now I need to place a ladder on the block underneath the sand on the exterior of the monument. So uh, let's move some stuff around here. Got my valuable sponge. And there's my ladder. Just right under there. And that was actually the wrong spot. That's fine. Uh, I need it right there. There we go. That's underneath the sand. Uh, and um, uh, now I'm going to kind of jump, swim, climb onto the top of the ladder there. Uh, there we go. Uh, so I'm, I'm actually standing on top of the ladder. The ladder has a small hitbox uh, on the top, so I'm just standing right on that edge. Uh, I'm not actually clinging to the ladder. Uh, and I'm going to get some sand ready. Uh, and I want to place sand um, right there, a pillar of two sand uh, in back of the door, two blocks to the right. So right there, uh, there's one and two. Okay. Uh, and now I'm going to prepare my hotbar with uh, 13 more blocks of sand and uh, the sugar canes. Uh, and I'm going to go out and I'm going to swim on top of that pillar. Uh, and then I'm going to uh, uh, center over the sand inside some sugar canes. Okay, now it's still really dark. It's going to actually get darker as I go up uh, before it gets lighter. Uh, it's a little bit hard to tell when guardians are actually targeting me. So I'm only going to go up uh, three blocks at a time uh, before I replace sugar canes. I'm going to break the sugar canes, uh, pillar up three blocks, and replace the sugar canes. 
And that's because it's just a little bit hard for me to uh, see the Guardian's attacks at this point. Another three. It's getting lighter because I'm getting closer to the surface. Okay. Um, and now uh, when I'm one block from the surface here, um, I can just break these sugar canes and pillar the last block in my hotbar and replace the sugar canes. Okay, and I'm hiding inside the sugar canes at water level. Um, and that's basically, uh, uh, the, I'm in the same position now uh, uh, that I was when I first uh, made a safe, uh, uh, safe point on the, uh, on, the, on the top of the monument over by the ring there. Uh, so I'm going to uh, uh, get five more blocks of sand here. I'm going to prepare a bucket of water. And I'm going to do the same uh, pillaring trick that I did before. Uh, oh, um, I should mention, before I continue here, I really need to check to make sure that I have two milk in my inventory. Um, and, and that's because if I had used more than one milk to remove mining fatigue, uh, to mine the prismarine block in order to get inside the monument, uh, I'd need to go get some more milk in order to continue. I, I need two buckets of milk at this point, at least two buckets. Uh, so if I didn't have two buckets, I'd want to sail back to the cow, uh, refill these three buckets with milk, uh, and then I'd come back here to this uh, to the sand pillar inside my sugar canes and I'd probably uh, abandon another boat in the process so I'd want to grab another boat from the project materials before I came out here too. Uh, okay so I, I've got uh, five blocks uh, in my hot bar. I'm getting ready to pillar. I'm just going to break the sand, pillar up those five blocks and if any guardian had targeted me uh, I just would have placed the water and spammed sugar canes but um, I didn't have to worry about that. Okay, now that I'm back up towards the arm, I'm going to connect, uh, I'm going to cap this pillar, and then I will connect it to the arm here, and return to the ring. Okay, uh, now I'm going to place the, um, uh, the furnace underneath the ring next to the sand pillar. So I'm going to drop it right here. Uh, and that's going to be a container for this valuable sponge uh, in case uh, uh, that will ensure that I don't lose it if anything goes wrong while I'm killing the next Elder Guardian. Uh, and uh, that is it for this video. One Elder Guardian down, two to go. Uh, in the next video, I'll be killing the Elder Guardian in the other wing of the monument over there. Uh, thanks very much for watching, and if you have any questions or suggestions, please leave a note in the comments.